Hello world, this is Leah Granger. Uh, I'm the co-host of Curtain Call, a weekly interview series with powerful women in the arts. This week on the show, we are speaking with the fabulous Larissa Primo. Uh, we've had a lot of different artists over the year, over the years, we've been doing this for a couple of years now, from um, singers, dancers, poets, writers, comedians, filmmakers, there's just such a wide array of talent uh, in this city. And honestly, we've had guests from around the world. Uh, and there she is. Yes, we did it. Oh, fantastic. Let's view this request and get her in the room. Uh, did we do it? I think we did. <laughs> There's often technical difficulties when it comes to Facebook Live or, you, or Instagram Live. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? We did it. I know I'm good. I know I'm such a dork that I wasn't following. So hence the reason why we had some, some issues, but yeah, no, I'm good. I'm hiding in my bedroom because my kids are home because they're not in camp. So anything can happen. All right. Well, let's hope for some excitement. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Uh, no problem. We're very excited to hear kind of just about your, your path because it's been a pretty uh, unusual one to sort of where you are today. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I kind of was listing some of your credentials or some of the fabulous things you've done over the years, but maybe could you take us back to your beginnings? Um, sort of like if you tell us about like what your sort of creative aspirations were as a young person, or if you even had them back then, like what were, what was young Larissa sort of? Young like, Larissa. Long. So like, like, like childhood Larissa? Like, sure. Yeah. Like a high school, like, were you like, this is my goal and my dream and I'm on track for it. Cause you know, like I talk to some people and they're like violinists at, you know, seven or whatever. And then that's mm -hmm. what they're doing today. And then other yeah. people like more, a little more convoluted. Yeah. So I, I guess when I was a kid, I was always funny, like, and like to perform a little bit. Right. And there was like a hot minute where I was like, yeah, I'm going to be an actor. And then, I kind of got older and I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I should be an actor. This is maybe not the right thing. So then I went away, I went to school and I started working on the campus radio and I thought, well, maybe I'll get into radio. So then a few years after university and traveling around and doing all of that, as you do in your twenties, I went, came back home to Toronto and got into radio, moved out West and started that. So mm -hmm. my first career was in radio on the radio. I lived in Prince George, British Columbia and Victoria Vancouver, and then kind of ended my career in radio in Toronto. Well, it was ended for me. I got fired. Yeah. So like, why, like, you were like an on-air personality in radio. Yeah. Were yeah, you all, like, at the time, like, were you thinking of yourself, like, as a comedian or as, like, a performer? Well, you know what's so funny? Like, I always kind of wanted to do stand-up or improv, but I was always a bit chicken shit. And then on the radio, I was funny, but... You know, in the early mid aughts, like it was it was weird being a lady on the radio. Like my role was to like support the man who I was I was on this morning show and mm -hmm. it didn't work very well for me. <laughs> so <laughs> what's that? Yeah. Extrapolate on that. What was going yeah. on at the time? Well well it's like it it wasn't the nicest environment to, to be in. Like back then things were still I don't know what they're like now, but they were weird and there was like sexual harassment and it wasn't the nicest place to work. Now, I was done with radio anyway, but they kind of like broke up with me before I broke up with them. Like I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then, you know, I got the kick in the butt that I needed to be like, okay, this is wrong. This is the wrong career for me. And I was getting bored and, you know, it was just boring. So then I... I'd always been writing and kind of learning how to use a camera and all this stuff all those years. And so I thought, well, what do I do next? So I ended up getting a job at a magazine being their video producer. And this is again in like, let's call it 2008. So I kind of learned on the, what's that? Was it here? Yeah, sorry. It was in, yeah, I was in oh. Toronto and it was for this small magazine. It was like a trade magazine about, um, the web hosting world you've probably okay. read it everybody that's right. everybody knows it mm -hmm. it's like uh you know very popular amongst nerds um 
So anyway, so that was my job. And it was a fun job. I have to admit, like, I traveled around, I learned how to film and edit. And I hosted these videos, like I interviewed, like tech people all over the world. And, and then I like to hear about these jobs that have perks. <laughs> it was cool. I think I have something in my teeth. That's sexy. Um, I, like, <laughs> I got big, I got big teeth, you know, if they're a very <laughs> prominent feature on my face. So uh, where did I travel? Oh, we used to get to go. We hosted these events once a month and we'd go to like all the major cities in the States and we'd like stay at the W hotel and I just go and film the event. And it was like open bar. I mean, it was so fun. We went to Cologne, Germany. We went to Amsterdam. Like it was pretty wild job. And it was in 2008 when, where everything had shit the bed, except for this industry where, you know, tech and web hosting. So I had a good time. And it was a great job. And it was like basically taught me how to, it was like going to film school without going, like at least to learn the technical side of like using a camera and yeah. using editing software, right? So then that inspired me. I got pregnant and had a child, one child. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll do this on my own because I think that companies want, you know, video content for the internet. Because again, this is like, now we're in like 2010. And yeah. it's like in people still weren't dumping that much money into content for the web at that point. Right. So I, I feel like pushing print foolishly. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, and then foolishly me, I was going after magazines since I already worked for a magazine and a good friend of mine. Yeah. And so I was like, but then the magazines were losing money, but I did do some, some cool stuff for a couple of magazines while that was happening. And then that was how it started. So then I had another child and I continued that. That's kind of funny. Like, so my first, <laughs> it's hilarious. You should having children's hilarious. It tickles. It literally tickles when they come out. You just giggle the whole time. <laughs> it's that, it's that baby. <laughs> so we, so yeah. So then after that, I, uh, oh, there was no mat leave. Right. Cause now I'm working for myself and I was, I remember filming, I gave, I had a shoot and my mom, I said, mom, you got to take the baby. This is my second baby. So it was less intimidating. So she was, I was two weeks out of having a baby. I took, I left the baby with my mom, went and shot like a very big CEO of like a huge bank. And I started like leaking. My breasts started leaking <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> And, you know, he didn't really know, he didn't really notice, to be honest, but I sure as hell did. And I was like, oh my God, if this doesn't end soon, I'm like, that's good. We don't need any more. You did a great job. That's a wrap. Bye. <laughs> and I'm just, <laughs> what's that? You're like, we got it. We got it. We got what we need. Yeah. yeah. We only need one take. One and done. Well done. Wow. You're so talented. You're so incredible. Let's go. Let's get the hell out of here. So anyway, from there, the company grew and uh, I expanded it a bit and that like into gamification and all this fun stuff. And then honestly, so I kept writing the whole time and, but you know, you get, it's a grind, you've got babies and you need to make money and all of that. But then I started doing improv with second city and I started writing a lot. And then I started going, you know what, this is crazy. I know how to do all this. I'm going to start shooting and writing and directing comedy because that's what I should be doing. Right. So then I started doing that in like, I don't know, let's call it 2016, 2017. I just even started taking a camera with my friend Sue and like, like just doing on the street funny stuff. And then I actually started writing some scripted stuff. I did a little web series, which was funny. It's funny. I went back and looked at it and the production value is like garbage, but it's still funny. <laughs> it's still funny. And then I did two short films and now I'm working on making my first feature film. So that's, that's sorry. It's not boring. I just talked for a long time. Shell, you really ripped through it there. <laughs> 44 years like that. So like, were you like from the beginning in the back of your mind? Like, I, I want to make like feature films. Like that is my dream. Never. At all? Never. Like was like Never. any sort of like vision of your path or were you like, okay, I'll, I'll do this. And then I guess now I'll do this and that kind of thing. Yep. <laughs> and I also want to just like work at a farmer's market and like do nothing too one day. Like, it's like, I don't know. I feel like for me, when mm -hmm. I did have a job, like when I worked in radio, it was like, that was part of the problem. I'm like, this is, I'm miserable doing this. I can't just do the same thing day in and day out. It makes me bonkers. But that's kind of what's cool about television and film because it's never the same, right? So 
the, the short answer is no. When I was like in my 20s, was I like, I want to write and direct comedy and, you know, this is what I want to do. It was, it almost seemed too out of reach. And then yeah. when I, right, I was like, well, I've already been to university. Am I going to go back to school now? Am I going to start like that? But my path is a bit different than maybe some people in, in film and television in that I kind of like faked it a lot and then figured it out. And now here I am. And I really feel hopeful for the, like, I really feel like I'm going to make some, I'm on my path of making my feature. And that's one thing. And I've got some great ideas for television. And I just want, you know, I just want people to laugh. And, you know, most of the stuff I do is female driven and, um, you know, kind of funny stories we've never seen before. And so that's kind of the, that's kind of the idea. So that is, that dream probably didn't start until I was like, let's call it 36. That's awesome. So, yeah. that's so you know what I mean? Because I'm like, yeah, just to be like, oh, like you can switch it up. Like it doesn't matter, you know, yeah. like who cares? And creatively and, and, you know, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, I am like almost always the oldest, <laughs> like when I'm doing some of these things, but I actually don't give a shit. I'm like, whatever, who cares? I'm still hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the, that's the attitude you want to have. Yeah, so, that, you know. And like how, and you talking about your path being different. Is it's that like, just in terms of like, you didn't go to film school. You just sort of like cobbled together, like figuring out how to do things. Is yeah. that not like, you don't meet other people that kind of had that path or is it sort of like, because I feel like when, as it when, in journalism, there was definitely like the people that went to journalism school. And then there was like the people that just like showed up for the internships and just were like, okay, like, what, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Da, 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 da. Yeah. It was just like me. Um, and it seemed like just as like valid a way to sort of figure out how to do things. And there's some, you know what I mean? Like there's some jobs where like you need to go to school. Like, yeah. Like a doctor. Things, like, <laughs> These industries, it's like also, it's like you learn so much on the job, I think. Well, a hundred percent. I'm definitely not the only person who did it this way, but I, um, yeah, I think that I meet, you know what? I meet like actors that kind of do it. Like they never went to film school. They're just like jumped right in. So, and then kind of learned on the job, like actors turn writer, turn director, you know? So I think, you know, somebody asked me, do you wish you'd had started this when you were a bit younger? Um, and I don't think so, because I don't think I'd have the confidence, you know, to just mm -hmm. go out there and try to get something that's like, I, I keep choosing these like hard careers to like, you know, even radio, like I had to move up to the middle of interior yeah. of British Columbia for my first gig. Like, you know, sometimes I'm like, I wish I just wanted to do something less hard to attain, right? Like, what? why didn't I just, like, be a teacher? Not that it's easy to be a teacher, but, like, you go to school, you go to teacher's college, you do your, your teaching, and you're a teacher, right? So mm -hmm. I think that, for me, the path, it seems like I keep choosing these difficult to get careers or successful careers. I mean, people have lots of careers, like, have the career, but without the success. So, so it's yeah. like a consistent career. Exactly. Well, you know how it is. It's like, yeah, you just kind of hustle. You have to hustle. But I promise you, if I wasn't doing this, I'd be miserable. There is something wrong with me. Um, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with you. Um, I have like, I love the hustle. I love it. Sorry, I'm weird. Just with my volume. I think it's okay. You can hear yeah, me. You right? sound weird. You sound like you sound like you're underwater. Did you? Are you having a shower? And no, I thought basically what happened, and I haven't figured out the workaround for this, is like somebody just called me, and it it like changes like the source of the sound. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You do sound a bit weird, though. Can you hear me? Yeah, but it's really quiet. I was just messing with you. I wasn't talking. <laughs> I don't know, but it is really quiet. I feel like I might have to stop and start again. Oh God, what's gonna happen? Okay, start and stop again. See what happens. Okay, bye. I'm back. And Larissa will be back joining us in just a second. Um, sorry about that little interruption. We will figure that out. So while we're waiting for Larissa, I'll just tell you a little bit. Oh, there she is. 
Let's get her in here. View. Yay. Uh, Instagram Live, man. It's got a few, it's got a few little bugs. Are you there? Are you Hi. There? Yeah, I'm here. You were frozen. Oh. How about now? No, you sound good. Yeah, it's good. It's okay. You can see me. Am I moving? Yeah, I can see you. You look like a real human. Yes. Um, okay. I want you to tell me about your project, about this, uh, the, the, the film that you're pitching or that, you're, that you've written. Oh, um, Yes. So the film that I've written, it's so interesting. Like I'm in a writer's group. Well, we're on a pause right now, but like, it's interesting to see how everybody has their own writing process. Right. And so for me, I just have an idea and then I start to write and it's usually a pile of garbage, like the first iteration, but then I go back and you know, you, you, fix it and you fix it and you fix it and you fix it and you fix it and then eventually you have a film and what's funny like again like the structure of my film was so bad i i had to go and learn how does one structure a film because i'd only written short films and web stuff right like and that's that's just not that difficult so anyway so i've written a film it's uh do you want me to tell you what it's about yes tell me what it's about because it's super interesting what it's about Okay, cool. It's about a mother and a daughter who both find themselves accidentally pregnant at the same time and they struggle with a difficult decision as to whether or not to keep their babies. It's a comedy. In a, in a nutshell, it is a comedy about abortion. So get ready. So how did you come up with this idea? I'm just curious. Uh, because I... To you. Like because... Right. Oh, uh, yeah. I have kids because I thought I was accidentally pregnant even though my husband has a vasectomy and I was said to my neighbor, oh, shit. I, I like I'm late like what the hell and at this point I'm like 41 and she's like well Larissa you're gonna you know like she was making fun of me I said are you kidding me you're gonna start the car and we're going to the closest clinic we can find I am not having this baby like not interested thank you very much I've had my babies I'm done whatever I feel no shame <laughs> admitting that I was not interested in having a third baby at 42 or whatever right um it wasn't for me so I started thinking about that and I was like, it started with like a woman getting accidentally pregnant and then getting a secret abortion from her husband. And that's how it kind of started. And then I was like, this isn't interesting enough. So I don't really remember how I came up with the daughter. Like, so her daughter is like 17. And then, so, and then it just kind of went from there. And again, I wrote it, rewrote it, wrote it, rewrote it, had other people look at it, had more people look at it. And now it's done and I've got some interest and I'm really, really excited because that's what you want, right? Like you, I, you put everything in. Uh, like pitching something like that. Like how much of it, because I, I imagine like I, I want to do everything, you know? So like, I'm like, I want to do stand -up comedy. Like I want to write a movie. Like I want to do yeah. all these things. There's only like so many non-paying, like, you know, like there's only so many, like, creative path you can pursue like passion <laughs> projects make money, right? oh yeah oh well this is this is why you know this is why i like the path i took like i've been making money doing like video and sure some of it's not super exciting like i've made quite a few training videos that most right. people have fallen asleep in but so what at least it's like kind of in my wheelhouse and I don't hate it. I like it. And it pays money. Well, at the same time, I can pursue my, my passion and my, my creative pursuits. So your question, like, how do you pitch something like that? You know, it's hard, right? Like, it's hard when you do something and you're like, this nothing could potentially come from this. Like, nothing. And that's that. Move on to the next thing, right? Like, so this one. Like, how much of it is, like, is this story... Like, there's got to be a lot of you in the story, I imagine. And so it's like, uh, when you're pitching the story, it's like, are you still, you know what I mean? Like, that you're yeah. this character, that you are, like, just the, when you're in the room. And you're also, like, a comedian yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, I, of, I often wonder, like, how, you know, there's, like, the script is one thing, but then I also, like, how much you have to, like, sell it in the room, kind of. 
Oh, a hundred percent. Like, and you know, people tell you that like people from the other mm -hmm. side, it's like, cause I've gone to all kinds of talks where it's like when you pitch to us and a piece of advice that I got not long ago was really good because it's like, listen, your idea is your idea. And if it's a good idea, great. But there's a million good ideas out there, but you got to kind of sell yourself. Right. So like, do we want to work with this person? Do we want, you know, so you have to be a little charismatic. And so if you're not, that's fine. Like if you're not just a charismatic person, but maybe try to tap into that in some way, because I thought that was good advice. It's like just, and it sounds so easy and so simple, like just be yourself. But no, at what, the end, what if yourself yeah. is like an antisocial weirdo? Like, fortunately, that's not true for you, but like, it doesn't seem fair somehow, you know, where it's like, oh, like, yeah. it's like there's just like, especially in entertainment or like in these creative fields, like it seems like a lot of it, there's so much of that. There's like so much of like networking and like selling yourself and just like being like this outgoing, likable person. So yeah. even if like the thing that you're making has like nothing to do with that, it's like yeah. people are like, do we want to like have to talk to this person? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Exactly. And that's tough, right? Because it's like, if that's not who you are, and you're going, you're pitching, and you're just, it's like talking to a piece of drywall, it's like tough, right? So I mean, for me, I, I like that advice, mainly because I, I can't be anyone, especially like I said, like, you know, I, I'm of a certain vintage. So I can't not be myself. Like, it's like, I don't know. I think sometimes when I was a bit younger, I would try to change because I'm like, yeah. oh my God, I can be a bit full on, you know, when I make dirty jokes and I say cunt and like all these things, like I just did on this interview. <laughs> like I just said that word on this interview. And so, you know, so when I was younger, I would just, I would try to pull back. And, yeah. you know, after, after a while, like you just, you can't, you, you got to be who you are. Right. So I'm, mm -hmm. I think that again, I'll go back to saying like, this happening at this time in my life, like I'm not 25. I've not, I'm not just graduated and bright eyed. It's like, I got to get like, it's, I think going to help me in the long run that this, this is happening for me right now. And it's, it's cool. It's fun. What's oh, Laura just joined. Hi, Laura. What's it been like to sort of start your own business as like a woman? Like you started in 2010, right? Yes. That's a good question. Like, so I know that that industry can just, well, like radio, obviously, but just in the, the sort of production side of things is can be like really male dominated. Like, has that was that like a thing that you had to deal with out of the gate, like getting, getting it off the ground? You know what? Yes, I think I mean, the short answer is yes. But having been in radio, which was, again, not a heavily female oriented industry. Yeah. And then even before that, working in tons of bars and restaurants around the world really you know you learn how to navigate that system and just keep your head up and above water and so when I started my company you know I don't I didn't see any like it, it didn't feel like I had the cards stacked against me or anything because I was a woman it didn't really I felt kind of ha empowered that I was a woman because things were changing too right like I think people were happy to see a woman come in and, and say, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to hold the camera and I'm going to direct you. And I, that it was good timing. I think it was good timing for me to be doing it. And um, it, it worked. It, it really did. I mean, I had to hustle, um, but any entrepreneur knows that, right? Like, it, yeah. you know, and yes, I will say this though. The one thing that I had to learn how to do, and this is no secret, was be confident when I was asking for money. Uh, you know what I mean? And I don't know if that's because I'm a female. I have no idea. But it was something I had to definitely just go in and stop worrying about. You know what I mean? Like, because I, I would go in and I, I know. Yeah. It's like, we always lowball ourselves. No, you have to know your worth. You have to know your worth. And if people don't want to pay you what you're worth, then they can, you know, beat it. Yeah. Or just feeling so. like you're asking people, like, it seems like a lot of money, you know? But it isn't. And when exactly, exactly. And when and you know, what's important, I actually remember talking to a woman who was working for another company similar to mine. And she told me what they were charging for we had the same client, a huge client. So they had lots of people doing and she told me what they were charging. And I was like, No way. 
So then I said, forget it. So then I like tripled my prices and nobody batted an eye. So I always remember that. I'm like, you know what? So sometimes talk to people about money. You know, like, I don't know. My mom and dad, I don't know, but like, I think the previous generation, like you didn't talk about money. It's tacky. Don't ask people what they sold their house for. Don't ask people how much they make. I'm like the opposite. Like I definitely have no problem talking about money and I don't think it's bad it's like why is it bad why is it bad like why is it tacky I, I don't I feel like that's still a thing like definitely like that was our parents generation but like also ours is like just to not and to like I just know negotiating in different situations it's like no one talks about money like till the very last second and it's like that's clearly a major factor in like, the decision oh yeah here. We're all like, of us. Like, how are we not talking about this? When I when I first got, started my own business, like I've I've started three companies, right? And all of them have seen you know moderate success. And I I remember almost like holding my breath when I talk money to like potential clients, and I'm like, why are you doing that? Like that is a very weird kind of visceral reaction. And so I just kind of thought, you know what, I just stopped caring. And that's hard to do, but you just have to say, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? I'm going to say this number and they can take it or they can leave it. And that's what it's going to be because that's what I need to do to survive and like to eat. And also that's what I'm worth. So it is kind of remarkable. A lot of like just parts of of, like the workplace and like basically excelling in your career is to just like not stop caring about like really obsessing over like other people's reactions to what you're doing I don't know I feel like that's true like the older you get the less you care and like that's like a huge advantage absolutely and that's the one thing like if I could have harnessed I mean again it's cliche like too bad I didn't know this at 25 right but if anybody is 25 (laughs) and listening right like right yeah so yeah so that's that's that but you know it's like i don't know i i maybe maybe i am tacky maybe i make people uncomfortable you and want to like see what you're doing or like are do you have projects that are like out there on the web like your films or anything are they like accessible like how can people find out about find your work yeah yes well funny you should say that because so my last short film, I just put on the internet because you have to wait until they're, you're done with the festivals and stuff before you can like just make it accessible to everyone. So that one is available on, I just put it on my, on my Instagram actually, because that's what everybody does now, right? Like, so that's um, at Larissa Primo 78. And then, you know what, I, I should put my first one on too, now that I've done that, because why wouldn't I? And so, or is it your business I do. Website? Yeah, I yeah, my business's name. I don't have it in front of me. My business's name is Framework Creative Content. Like framework, like do you get it? Like your businessy business side. That's my businessy business. Like I don't have a Larissa Primo website. You don't have like a I'm not an OnlyFans? I don't have an OnlyFans. Do you know? (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Leah. Oh my god, my dog just like totally farted. It's disgusting in here. I know. There's the dog. Like, we need to clear the room. Hi. Jeff. What's that? I said I have some dog party stories. Like, recently. Oh, great. That's fine. Oh, great. I can't wait. I'm going to remind you. I definitely want to hear those stories. Um, and, then, and then this film, like, that's something I guess we'll have to just, like, wait for the future to, to unfold before we can. Yeah. Does it have a name right now? It's, yes, the name is Double Lines, and basically because when you take a pregnancy test, <laughs> right? Yeah, and also the the double story oh, of the mother. Two of them. And there's two of them, so that's pretty it's clever. It is. It's um, so fun. And yeah, so yeah, so that's that. And then I'm working on. I don't know. I'm really stuck on this whole like abortion. It's really upsets me, obviously, what's happening in the United States. And it scares me to death that it will trickle up here. So I always find the easiest way to talk about uncomfortable conversations is to wrap it in comedy. So that's why I've written a comedy that, you know, is like the baseline is abortion. And now I've kind of got this other idea that I just thought of the other day, but it's abortion again. Like (laughs) I need maybe need to let it go. Or do I? You know, I don't think yeah, I do. Do you? Are you ever doing stand up? 
So I, I have done improv, which is fun. I love it. Stand up. Like, I feel like I might vomit if I, however, I'm going to do it. I've, I'm going to go to Second City and like, there's like, I mean, I want to go and learn how to do it. Like, I'm a little bit okay, of a student. Let me just interrupt you. There's yeah. a course that my friend did with Precious Chong, who is. Yeah, like, I know her. Precious Chong is his daughter. Yeah. And my friend did it. it, they did it over, he did it over Zoom during the pandemic. And I went to the student show. Yeah. And it was so good. Like, was it? Really, like, some of the people, like, just do it. Like, they just, she really taught them. She got, like, the material out of them. Everybody did a tight tag, but all the lines are tight. Just some of them really were. So that's I cool. I want to do it. Like, that's one that I'm thinking about doing. And it's, like, stand up specifically. But I know, I'm sure Second City has stuff too. Yeah, well, this is part of, it's funny. I was just looking it up the other day. I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just do it? It'll get me out of the house. It's always funny. You know what I mean? And if nothing comes of it, who cares? It's just something I've tried. Yeah, and I've always wanted to, so I may as well, right? Yeah, let's do it together. We'll go We'll go do stand-up. Like, make a pot. Because okay. I've been talking about it forever. I think I'm hilarious. And I need to be some pot. Oh, yeah, I would never do it because I'm terrified. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is terrifying. Like anybody who does it is like, remarkable. Like, let's, yeah. let's do it. All right. Deal. Packed. Thank Packed. Made. Well, I want to. I'm going to wrap things up. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure that if people want to find you, where are the best places to find you? I guess Instagram is pretty fun. You know, it's at Larissa Primo seventy eight. That's the year I was born. Or yeah, yes, seventy eight for life. So that's it, really. How about there? That's a good place. Fantastic. Yay. You thanks, Leah. Totally this was fun. Already. Yeah. And also, Fab Lab is presenting a flamenco show this Sunday at La Cueva at Basement 254 in Toronto. If people are interested in that, you can check it out at fablab.ca uh, with some really great artists, local and uh, singers from France. And... We will be back next week with another fantastic oh, open tomorrow. Our co-host just logged on from Columbia. Hi, tomorrow. Marissa. We're just wrapping it up. So thank you so much, Marissa, for being here. It's been really wonderful chatting with you. And we'll catch up to talk about dog parts really soon. Okay. Thanks. You're, I'm kind of losing you. You're, you're sounding like you're underwater again, but I think you just said bye. I did. Okay. Mwah. See you soon. Bye. Thanks, Leah. Bye.